Sauropods are my favorite dinosaur group. And one reason is their awesome size. Who can forget this scene from Walking with Dinosaurs? Yet, there were mammals that once grew to incredible sizes too. I've always been fascinated by prehistoric mammals because dinosaurs and dragons are so far removed from anything we have today. The idea that something familiar today was bigger and badder in the past is awe-inspiring. Imagine, very loosely speaking of course, that elephants were bigger, bears were bigger, cats were bigger, Sloths were bigger, armadillos were bigger, and of course, rhinos were bigger. And they don't come bigger than this. Not since the dinosaurs has nature got this big. A fully grown male stands over 7 meters tall and weighs in at 15 tons. That's equivalent to 8 modern rhinos. No other land animal even comes close. I was never so pleased to see this animal realized on screen, as this has been my favorite prehistoric mammal ever since I first knew it as Baluchitherium from my very first dinosaur book, this ladybird. I've since learned that Baluchitherium and Indricotherium have been subsumed under Paraceratherium. I've been waiting to see it realized as a model I'd be proud to own, and finally, I have it. I do have a mother's collection of prehistoric mammals, including the Collecte 1 to 20 scale ones, but that scale is really a joke. Now, some, like the Elasmotherium, is close to 1 to 20. Others, like the Dinotherium, is the correct length, but too short. But the most egregious example is this purported 1 to 20th scale Paraceratherium. I thought a real 1 to 20th scale Paraceratherium would be a fantasy until now. This is the eye toy Paraceratherium, and appropriately, it is huge. Now, I usually try to minimize cuts in my videos, but this is one that will have many simply because of its sheer size. And because at 1.5 kilograms, that's about 3.5 pounds, it's not easy to manipulate with one hand. Now, this model is 38 centimeters or 15 inches long and 21 centimeters or 8.2 inches tall at the withers. At the real life estimate of 8 meters or 26 feet long and 4.5 meters or 14 feet at the withers, that makes the scale 1 to 21, very close to 1 to 20. Now, what's really cool is Granger and Gregory, in their 1936 paper, estimated the average distance between fore and hind feet to be 240 centimeters. For a 1 to 20 of scale, this should be 12 centimeters. Well, what do you see here? Now looking at the ambling pose, you can appreciate the majesty, the dignity, but also the ponderousness of this huge animal, full of thick, powerful muscle. Now let's look at the very realistic skin texture and color. And this here really reminds me of what you see on rhino skin. Or elephant skin. And on the other side, the same. You can see the creases and folds, uh, and, and they are deeper around the joints where the most movement takes place. Unfortunately, unlike dinosaurs where we can fantasize about color, 
for prehistoric mammals, extant mammals are a good guide, and we know that elephants and rhinos have dull colours with no intriguing patterns. And yet iToy hasn't taken the easy way out, but actually included subtle washes you have to see in person to appreciate. I don't think that my camera is fully picking them up. And taking a cue from modern rhinos, you see some of these invaginations of skin here. Like the thighs, the flanks, the shoulders, the chest. And you see this in rhinos, which hints at the link in their relationship. Now, the deeply folded skin has been proposed to serve various functions, such as thermal regulation to help lose heat from the core, you know, as a barrier against external parasites, and actually retaining some water after soaking in a body of water, after a bath, for example, which would probably serve to cool the animal for a bit longer. And especially important, since an animal this large would be in danger of overheating. Now, what might have lent a bit more interest would be including those lumps you see on rhino thighs and shoulders. Now, moving up, we can focus on the head. Now, the eyes are incredibly lifelike, even disturbingly so. I didn't like the product images of the sclera, and I had in mind to paint the whole thing black. But now I see how realistic it is, and I am of two minds about it. There's something soulful about this, like an animal that has lived a long time of hard experience. Now, based on the skull, with long supranasal bones and nasal incision, Paraceratherium might have had a prehensile lip, like the tapir or the black rhinoceros. And that's reflected here, with some very nice wrinkles. Even the inside of the ears are textured, and it's nice when manufacturers use the opportunity for finer detailing in larger scale models. The vertebrae were extremely huge. In fact, Granger and Gregory remarked that the mid cervicals look like they belong to sauropods, even bearing pleural cells, cavities which in sauropods may help lighten the weight of the bone. The proportions of the neck have been remarked to be similar to that of the horse uh, due to similar stresses experienced, though I'm not sure how that carries over in this design. Regardless, I think you can appreciate the thickness of the general form. And I can only imagine how thick the nuchal ligament down the neck and the supraspinous ligament down the spine must have been. Now, Paraceratherium has often been called a prehistoric rhino, but it's not really closely related to extant rhinos. It does belong to the superfamily Rhinocerotoidea, but it's from the Hyracodontidae family, not the Rhinocerotidae to which our modern rhinos belong. Now, all of it falls under the order Perisodactyla, hooved animals that bear weight on an odd number of toes and digest plant cellulose in their intestines. As you can see, the weight bearing seems to be taken by all three toes, whereas early authors noted adaptations to monodactyly. But I have to say, it's still done very nicely with small little cracks in the hooves, just as you'd expect in a real animal. Let's compare him to some other mammals that are about 1 to 20 of scale. Now here's the Collectae Elasmotherium. The Andrusarchus. The Lysowicea. The Smilodon
and Demoropus. For dinosaur fans, I only have the uh, collective Cetacosaurus and the Safari Pachycephalosaurus, which are about 1 to 20 of scale. Alright, so that's it for the eye toy Paraceratherium. And really, it's a bit of a dream come true for me. My favorite prehistoric mammal realized in the 1 to 20 of scale, I never thought I'd get. The proportions and detailing are just beautiful, with a very stately pose as befits a ponderous animal of this stature. And even though it might appear drably colored, as large mammals tend to be, there are enough variations and it will be a worthy centerpiece for anyone's prehistoric mammal collection. Now this figure does come in a version with a base, uh, a premium version, which I didn't get because I thought it would take up too much space. I do regret that decision. After all, I could have just put the base away if I needed more real estate. And finally, it might interest you to know that Paraceratherium was actually an inspiration for this. Alright, so that's it for now. And next, my 100th video.